Welcome to the Kanaba channel. In my previous tutorial, I talked about the files tab and how I manage all my project files. I was planning on doing a snake skill tutorial next, but as I was making the script, I realized that there's quite a lot I want to cover regarding symmetry first in Nomad Sculpt. My symmetry tutorial will be split into three parts. Part 1 is all about the symmetry tab and basics of sculpting with symmetry. In part 2, we will go through my symmetry troubleshooting process on this sculpt. We will talk about general mistakes we may encounter from sculpting with symmetry and how to problem solve them. Finally, in part 3, I'll show my symmetry workflow for two of my sculpts and some advanced concepts for setting up symmetry anywhere in 3D space. I'll explain the ideas in depth because I believe it's more important to understand the concepts rather than just showing what buttons to press. That way we can apply the concepts flexibly to our own sculpts. Also, Nomad Sculpt is constantly evolving. The UI has changed quite a lot since the first time I used it, and with each new update, more functions are added or refined. So even if the software changes with future updates, the basic 3D sculpting principles will remain the same. Hopefully through this tutorial series, you'll get more comfortable with sculpting freely like I do, because you will learn how to fix any mistakes that comes your way. I'll start by showing the basics of sculpting with symmetry. Starting with a new file, by default, symmetry is enabled for our objects. Symmetry allows our brush strokes to be mirrored on the selected planes. We can see which symmetry plane is activated by opening the symmetry tab at the top right, or long press or swipe on the shortcut button to open the same menu here. So these two menus are the same thing. By default, the X plane is enabled, which naturally creates a sculpt facing forward in the scene. If you are unfamiliar with symmetry or sculpting in general, it's good to leave the symmetry tab open to keep the symmetry overlays visible as you sculpt. I recommend keeping the floor grid visible too. Sculpting with overlays is a great way to get a feel of how symmetry works. More importantly, it's a great way to keep track of how your sculpt moves in the 3D space, making sure that your sculpt is facing forward and is symmetrical at all times. This can be helpful if you are a beginner and you find that your scalp goes all over the place in ways that you don't quite understand. You may think that this scalp is at the right place, but when I turn on the grid, it's floating at some random spot in 3D space. And if I click on local, you can see that the symmetry line is not aligning with the grid anymore. As for me, I don't have overlays visible all the time now because I'm quite used to Nomad Sculpt and they do get in the way visually. But even so, I still check the grid and symmetry guides often as I work, and that's why I highly recommend you to do this in your workflow too. We can also enable show line and show plane to keep the overlays permanent even with the menu closed. But I prefer to leave them unchecked, pin this menu on my screen, and keep the overlays off when I don't need it by closing the menu. Before we move on to the symmetry tab, I want to go through my gesture settings in Nomad Sculpt. I feel that this is relevant to this tutorial because many of my early beginner symmetry mistakes came from accidental adjustments that I wasn't aware of, either by my hands or stylus. Under the gesture menu here, I have disabled finger always moves in the top bar. This checkbox allows finger presses to use the smooth tool when your stylus has a tool selected. In most cases, I feel it gets in my way, so I have it off. If you sculpt with finger gestures and not the stylus, this wouldn't be applicable for you. But I also disable finger gestures for sculpt, gizmo, and material picking. I think they're switched on by default, and I've lost count of how many times my hands would accidentally do something to my sculpt without me knowing. It also gives me a sense of comfort knowing that my pen is the only thing that can do sculpt manipulation. That brings me to disabling stylus for select object. This is very useful to prevent unwanted selection when sculpting between multiple objects. Many times I would isolate a geometry and see unknown brush strokes in hidden areas because of accidental object selection. So I restrict object selections to finger taps only. If you use the macro pad like I do, I suggest scrolling down the gesture tab to history 2 and 3 and disable history shortcuts. By the way, I don't suggest for you to blindly copy my settings. Instead, try them out one by one and see whether or not it helps or hinders your creative process. Because ultimately, we want to be comfortable with our setup to have fun making 3D art. But I'll still recommend this to beginners to restrict the options you have, so that when mistakes are made, you'll know better where they came from.
Let's go through the symmetry tab options now. Under planes, I can activate any axis to have my brush strokes mirrored on the selected axis, which can be useful, for example, to sculpt a cornerbit slime ball. I can turn off symmetry anytime to sculpt areas that I don't want to be mirrored, and when I turn it back on, I can still move things around consistently if both sides are relatively similar. Note that the word plane is used instead of point. The symmetry plane affects the whole scene regardless of where the symmetry icon is. So with the X plane symmetry selected, I can have my mesh all the way out here and symmetry works the same way as the one here, as long as the plane cuts through them in the middle. Next on the tab is radial. We can increase the number of times our brush strokes are repeated on each axis in a radial pattern. For example, I have a vase from my original sculpt where the wire radial is repeated 5 times to create this pattern. On a side note, when making this, I remember getting confused between radial in the symmetry menu versus radial repeaters in the add menu. I'll go through repeaters in a future tutorial, but for now just know that radial in symmetry tab repeats the brush stroke on a single object, while radial repeaters repeats an object to create multiple copies of it. Moving on to method, we have the option of choosing local or world symmetry. The difference between them is again best demonstrated with both the symmetry and grid overlay visible. With world selected, the symmetry plane will stay fixed at the center of the world, the center being the world origin where the x, y, and z axis intersects. If I move my mesh now, the symmetry plane will stay at the spot. You can see the symmetry line moving across my mesh as I move it. If I choose local symmetry instead now and move my mesh, the symmetry plane will follow my mesh. This way, if it's off-centered, I can still sculpt with symmetry. Local symmetry is useful for objects that are now centered in the world scene and need symmetry sculpting. So even if this is not aligned with the grid, I can still sculpt with symmetry. At this point, I want to go through the general concept of pivot points because it ties very closely to symmetry planes. I'll also be using pivot points a lot in part 2 of this series. I'll just be going through the general sense of it, at least in the way that I understand. And if you are familiar with 3D space and pivot points, you can skip ahead. So a pivot point is the point around which an object moves, rotates, or scales. We can see arrows coming out of the pivot point and rings surrounding it for our translate, rotate, and scale controls. And why is a pivot point here exactly? We can understand this better when we create a new object with this button here. So I'll click on the Add button and go ahead add a default sphere into the scene. Whenever we create a new object this way, it will appear in the middle of the grid. If I select the gizmo tool, we can see that the pivot point is exactly in the center of the object. And this pivot point will be at the world origin, where the x, y, and z values are zero. If we activate the symmetry planes x, y, and z, all three planes will align with the respective axis on the grid. Now when we switch the symmetry method to local and move this object around, we can see that the symmetry plane moves with the pivot point. A few key things to note, if we move the pivot point of the object, it will not affect the position of the symmetry plane. Remember that these two controls are two separate things. Another thing to note is when using local symmetry, that the symmetry icon will move around depending on where the middle of the geometry is. So if I switch from world and back to local again, you can see that the symmetry point has moved. If you're new to 3D, I would like you to gain awareness of where the pivot point of each object is as your sculpt progresses. For example, if I want to make drastic changes to my sculpt, I'll be mindful of where my pivot point is so that I can sculpt around it instead of pushing the mesh far from it. This way, the gizmo will still be quite centralized and I don't need to fix its position. I also recommend translating and rotating your objects one axis at a time to prevent introducing unwanted transforms. It's a great way to position and angle the gizmo exactly how we want it to be too. Initially, dealing with a few objects can already be quite overwhelming, especially if the UI is unfamiliar to you. It was the same for me at the beginning too. So take your time and build up your intuition through practice. Start with a project with one object, then two or three, 
then work with more geometries when you get comfortable getting around. Eventually, dealing with one character will get easier, and in time, we can become confident in handling more. Back to the menu, we have the mirroring feature. Mirroring allows us to reapply symmetry to our object. This is useful when the object is not symmetrical. Next up is flip object. It flips the object at the symmetry plane. And finally, we have a few advanced functions that allows us to reset the symmetry plane automatically or adjust it manually. The first button is world center or object center depending on which method you select. As the name suggests, world center reset means bringing the pivot back to the world origin if it's not there. So I'll just do a quick demonstration. So for whatever reason the world symmetry is here, I can click on this to bring it back. For local symmetry, same thing. If local symmetry plane is off the object center, I can click on this to reset it. For orientation reset, if your symmetry axis is rotated like this, I can reset it to align it to the X, Y, and Z axis. Finally, we have Gizmo Edit. To quickly show what it does, if I click on this, I can move my symmetry plane to exactly where I want it to be. That's it for part one. Thanks for hanging out with me and my Conobet friends. I'll switch things up by doing a troubleshooting demo in part 2, where I'll be fixing mistakes on my scope and showing ways to improve all my workflow. Stay tuned!